Yeah, and getting a clear diagnosis of autism could soon become easier with the development of a new brain scan. Current methods for detecting the condition can be lengthy and they can also be expensive, but scientists at King's College London say they've made a breakthrough. Here, Nicholas Joy describes how he was diagnosed with Asperger's. Um, to get a diagnosis, it took uh, nine months in the end from having initially been referred locally to then uh, ascertaining my needs and getting referred. It meant an awful lot actually because it explained a lot of the difficulties socially that I'd been having with uh, my peers but also um, behaviours and uh, my manner of being where I had difficulty understanding myself. It was a great weight off my chest and a great relief because it helped explain a lot of my problems as well as it gave me a greater understanding of myself. Um, with help I was able to start using this service here through getting a referral and um, also uh, accessing other facilities, meeting various other people uh, with Asperger's syndrome expanding my social network, making more friends. So many doors opened and it was wonderful. Nicholas Joy, let's speak now to Christine Ecker from the Medical Research Council and Polly Tommy, whose son has autism. Good morning to Hello. you both. Well, Christine, first of all, can you explain to us how this brain scan works? Yes, basically um, scientists have um, known for a while that people with autism have differences in brain structure. So some areas are simply bigger or smaller or some areas are also different in shape. And we can now use this information to make a prediction. So we can now scan someone in 15 minutes and we can then say at an accuracy of 90% whether this brain is closer to someone with autism or to someone without autism. Because it picks up biological markers which are saying what? Exactly. I mean, this is the first test that uses biological information to make a diagnosis. I mean, as you might know, conventionally, um, the diagnosis is um, based on op behavioral observations. So we think this is um, a very big step forward towards having a biomarker for autism. How many people have you tested out so far? Because it's just adults so far, isn't it? Yes. So far, we've only looked at adult males because autism is four times more frequent in males than it is in females. And also the diagnosis is more difficult in adults. So we have looked at the um, group with the strongest diagnostic needs. We are also hoping to look at kids in the very near future and we think it's going to work even better because differences in brain anatomy are more pronounced during childhood. Well, well it would be great if you could use this for children as well because Billy, your son, has autism. He's now 14 but it was it took a long time when he was two. Yeah, it took to a year for him to, to, to get his diagnosis. I mean, it was quite obvious there was something wrong with him, but um, it's, the, it's the ones that haven't got the, such obvious traits that I think are struggling more and waiting a, a long time to get a diagnosis. And the difference of getting an earlier diagnosis would be what? Crucial, because the sooner we can get help to these children, we know the better the outcome's going to be for them. So the longer we leave it, the longer it takes them to have a diagnosis, it, it, the less likely it is that, that we can get them the crucial help so early. Is it an expensive bit of kit, this brain scanner, or do hospitals have it anyway no. and they're just using it differently? Absolutely. You'd be surprised to hear we have the um, existing, um, we can use the existing scanners already. So we can use existing clinical um, MRI scanners that are um, used in any hospital to diagnose broken arms or broken legs. So all we need is just a little bit of a um, software update to make this um, technique available. Although, Polly, you do have a concern about autistic children being put into scanners. Yeah, I think it's going to be very tricky to get them in there. I mean, I know my son would be absolutely petrified because he, would, he doesn't understand what, what, you know, as a, a normal 14-year-old maybe would. So I think that is going to be difficult. And I think also, if we're going to be looking at children, we've got to be really, really careful that we look at all the different types of autism. So there are so many different types. You know, my son developed normally for the first year then something happened, then he, he, he had autism. So it'd be great if we can look at all the different types from the high functioning, the ones that believe they were born with it. It's so many different, we need to, to really pinpoint what, what types of autism we're looking at. And you're saying he has quite a severe form of autism. You're also talking about Asperger's because we were hearing Nicholas a little earlier. Can this brain scan detect all forms on the spectrum? Yes, we're autism. hoping in the very near future that it will be able to de detect it. So far we've looked at a combined sample of people with Asperger's and um, high-functioning autism, but we are just in the process of setting up a new kind of computer program which can also distinguish between Asperger's, high-functioning autism and then controls.
all right. okay, thank you both. thank you very much indeed.